Oh, that was four bucks. I think we're going to tie a very recent pattern. Uh, I was fishing uh, a recent evening and watching the gentleman next to me uh, hit some largemouth bass very steadily. Uh, I was picking up uh, fish on the poppers. Uh, but he was fishing a small, two-inch long, perch-colored, sinking Rapala. And I thought, eh, we could copy that. So I gave it a try. Uh, I've only been out one other time with it, and it picked up a half dozen bass very easily, stripping it in as a streamer. It's a very easy and durable streamer to tie, so I figured I'd share it. Uh, like I said, I've only fished it once, uh, but I like the durability of the pattern, and... Uh, I liked how it performed, so let's go over how I tied it. I'm going to start off with this uh, Daiichi 2370 7X long Dick Talor hook. It's my favorite streamer hook. And 6 op black thread. We're going to start our thread right up by the head, about an eye length back from the eye. This has got a tapered loop, so. Uh, you know, bind it there anyway. And the first material you're going to tie in is dyed pearl diamond braid. It's dyed fluorescent orange. Looks more gold than orange. <clears throat> Very stretchable pattern. I've had it around for a while. I've used it on a couple patterns. Uh, but this seems to be the one that uh, it's impressed me the most with. I tie it down a couple wraps at the head, then pull it tight across the back of the fly, and bring your body back to the point of the hook. And then bring your thread back forward. Next you're going to take that braid and you're going to pull it tight. And you're going to wrap it just one in front of the other. It flattens out pretty good. I don't build this up. I'm not tapering a body. I'm just palmering a body almost like you would a piece of wool yarn on a wooly bugger or wrapping tinsel. Just a single layer. It's got enough flash if I ever get, you know, if, if it gives you a little gap somewhere or it doesn't lay perfect, it really doesn't matter. You're just adding this for the flash anyway. And you're going to bring your body all the way forward. And tie off at the point of origin or the point of tie in. Now, when dealing with synthetics, I'm a little paranoid with material slipping. So what I do whenever I'm dealing with specifically synthetics and I'm stretching it, I throw a quick whip finish right there. That way it's not going anywhere. We're not going to cut it off, but... <coughs> Excuse me. Next we're going to do, next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a, a red permanent marker. I got a Copic marker here and we're gonna do the flanks in red. Just three or four swipes gives it a permanent red. Doesn't completely cover the braid which I like. It keeps that gold, goldish orange color but it gives it that flash of red, that distress color. And I don't have a rotary vise, so we're going to tie in the belly. I like to flip my hook upside down. If you have a rotary, true rotary, you'll be uh, laughing at me right now. But The next material you're going to tie in is gold crystal flash. And you're going to tie it in at the point of tie in for the body. And 
And I like to flip my hook open up because uh, I like to separate the hook a little bit to get it to lay right. I want it divided on the other side of the hook. And there you go. The next material you're going to tie in is olive super hair. I like olive because in the water, olive becomes muted enough, it doesn't overtake. It's not dark like brown where it'll, uh, it'll only work in certain sunlight phases, but uh, olive seems to be a good all around color. I'll sweep that super hair back so that I know I have, I can get most any curly cues or, or short fibers out of it. And I'm going to tie in twice the amount of super hair that I tied in for the belly crystal flash. I tie that in a little bit long, and I'll move it back a little bit to get it clear of the eye. It's a slippery head, so I work it back into the level part of the body to get it stable. If I lose a couple fibers, I don't care. And I'll come back, I'll go to the head, back to the front a couple wraps, go back to the back of the head, lock it in place, and you're just building the taper. Very slippery material. And I want a good tapered head. A prominent head. I'm not going to put eyes or anything on this, so I want the head to be very prominent. And then you're done with your thread. Next, you're going to sweep these fibers to the rear, getting them all together. Because you're going to color your fly. Put your artwork to a test. Get most of the flyers out of the way. And now you'll see why I wanted to, why I flipped it upside down and got it divided because I want it kind of where it needs to be when I start striping this fly. Can get a little unruly. But once you get it, you're good. And I use my vise as a measurement. So I might not be giving you the exact measurements here. But I would say I'm approximately half the length of the hook shank past the bend of the hook. Then you want to take your black Copic pen and you're going to do the tail. You're going to do the tail about a quarter inch wide. I like to do the tail together before the striping. The next, just across the top of the green, or the olive, I'm going to give some barring. Evenly spaced.
angled slightly back and I'm going to rotate it and pull that olive a little bit away if you get a little bit on the body it really doesn't make a lot of difference just don't want to overdo it and then once you get the barring done you're going to cut your hair off all of it right at the back of the tail and it'll get a little unruly but actually when this gets wet it mats down <coughs> to a very realistic color variation and then for my head I use Sally Hansen's I'll brush on a very liberal first coat and then rotate it so it dries give that a couple seconds and then apply a second coat and there it is Oop. missed the fiber if I had to call it something I'd say it's a little perch streamer all synthetic very durable seems to do well on its initial outing a little bit of experimentation when you see something happening on the water you can almost always tie a fly to match any spinner or lure all you gotta do is pay attention a little bit see what's working come back to the bench put something together that comes as close as possible you might be surprised a little perch synthetic give it a try try a variation that matches your water good luck See you on the water.